Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, a month ago, AMD released a pretty unusual graphics card called the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. In short, this was a core-heavy GPU with a very limited memory interface. Just 5% fewer cores than the 7900 XT, but almost 30% less memory bandwidth. And this did cause a few odd performance-related issues for the GRE, but finally, there may be a way to address this. But before we find out, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermaltake and their CTE E600 mid-tower case. As part of their centralized thermal efficiency series, it features a dual chamber design, making it big on the inside with loads of room for not just building a new PC, but also managing all the cables with ease. The CTE E600 includes a PCIe 4.0 riser cable and floating GPU bracket for vertical GPU mounting and can support up to 14 120mm fans or 12 140mm fans. And despite the unique design, it uses high quality materials including tool free perforated mesh and tempered glass. Glass. There's also room for up to a 420mm radiator in the front, rear, bottom and or back tray, allowing for plenty of customization and cooling, so for more information please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the problem is memory bandwidth. This has been caused by two things, one being the narrower 256 bit wide memory bus, and the other is the use of relatively slow 18 gigabits per second GDDR6 memory. Now, there's obviously nothing we can do about the 256-bit wide memory bus, short of, I suppose, upgrading to the XT model. But the memory frequency, that is something that we can tinker with, or, well, it was something that we thought we could tinker with previously. Because you see, for my day one review and I went to overclock the GRE, I discovered some pretty ridiculous limits. Memory overclocking was almost entirely locked down, as AMD was only allowing the frequency to be increased by a maximum of 3%, to 2,316 megahertz, resulting in a throughput of 18.5 gigabits per second. So after quizzing AMD about this odd limitation, they got back to me claiming that it was a bug and that they would address it with a future driver update, but beyond that I didn't get any specifics. But last week they did roll out a driver, version 24.3.1, and after quickly checking the release notes, I found reference to the GRE under the fixed issue section. And here AMD said, the maximum memory tuning limit may be incorrectly reported on AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE graphics products. So presumably that was no longer going to be the case. And sure enough, with this driver installed, the limit was no longer 2,316 megahertz, but rather 3,000 megahertz, or in other words, 24 gigabits per second. Now, I certainly didn't expect that the 18 gigabits per second memory that comes with the GRE would hit 24 gigabits per second, but we now had the ability to find the limits. And find the limits I did, resulting in an operating frequency of 2,650 megahertz for a transfer speed of 21.2 gigabits per second, and that's a nice 15% boost over stock, and considerably better than what we were able to achieve previously. Then with the max power limit set to plus 15%, I was able to achieve a stable core clock frequency of 2.7 GHz using the Sapphire Nitro Plus model. This should provide us with some pretty decent performance gains, and to make this updated look at the GRE a bit more interesting, I've also included the ASUS Tough Gaming version of the RTX 4070 Super, which has been manually overclocked to a core frequency of 2825 MHz, with the memory at 1513 megahertz, resulting in a transfer speed of 24.2 gigabits per second, which is a 15% boost over stock. For testing, we're using our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 CL30 memory, and in total I've tested 12 games, but we'll only look at the individual results for a few of the games since we've already looked at most of these results before, but of course we will check out the 12 game average. So, let's take a look at what we have. First up, we'll take a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and here we're seeing some rather big gains when manually overclocking the 7900 GRE. Jumping up from 155 FPS on average at 1440p to 171 FPS, and that's an impressive 10% gain on a model that's already factory overclocked, mind you. The RTX 4070 Super, on the other hand, saw a 7% uplift through overclocking, though that is over the factory spec model. Still not a bad result, or rather, I should say, a very typical result for modern GPU overclocking. Then at 4K we're seeing a slightly more significant 13% uplift for the manually overclocked GRE, 
while the 4070 Super once again gained 7%. Now, though we saw some pretty impressive gains when manually overclocking on Call of Duty, those margins don't always translate to other titles, and Starfield is a great example of that. At 1440p, the overclock GRE was a mere 3% faster, while we saw just a 4% gain for the 4070 Super, so very underwhelming results in this title. Though, having said that, things do look a little better for the Radeon GPU at 4K, as here the GRE saw a 7% boost, and yet despite that, the RTX 4070 Super was just 2% faster once overclocked. Still, overall, the margins seen in Starfield are much smaller than what was produced in Call of Duty. So let's move on. Next up, we have The Last of Us Part 1, and here we're looking at a more typical 7% increase for the manually overclocked GRE, which coincidentally is the same improvement delivered with the 4070 Super, meaning the margins between these two GPUs remain much the same at 1440p. Then boosting the resolution of 4K does change things a little, and here the GRE overclock is a bit more handy, boosting 1% lows by a massive 16%, with a more modest 11% improvement for the average frame rate. Then we see that the 4070 Super was able to maintain that 7% uplift seen at 1440p. Moving on to Dying Light 2, we saw a rather large 13% uplift for the manually overclocked GRE graphics card at 1440p jumping up from 100 FPS to 113 FPS, and that made it faster than even the manually overclocked 4070 Super, as the Nvidia GPU improved here by a mere 3% margin once overclocked. Upping the resolution of 4K sees much of the same, here the GRE was 10% faster once overclocked, while the 4070 Super was just 4% faster, though in this example both products did deliver the same level of performance. We're also looking at a 13% improvement for the overclocked GRE in Cyberpunk 2077, jumping up from 98 FPS to 111 FPS, making it just 6% slower than the 7900 XT. The 4070 Super, on the other hand, improved by a 6% margin once overclocked, delivering similar performance to that of the 4070 Ti, but that still made the overclocked GRE 8% faster. Even at 4K, we see that AMD has an advantage in this matchup when factoring in the overclocking potential. Stock, the 7900 GRE and 4070 Super delivered the same level of performance, but with both overclocked, the GRE is 10% faster, so not an insignificant margin. Finally, the last game that we're going to bother looking at the results for, at least individually, is Resident Evil 4, and as usual, we'll go over the 1440p numbers first. Here, the results aren't particularly exciting. The overclocked GRE was just 4% faster, and we actually saw a slightly larger 6% uplift for the overclocked 4070 Super. That said, boosting the resolution to 4K changes everything, and now the overclocked GRE is 9% faster, matching the performance of the 7900 XT and 4070 Ti Super. The 4070 Super, on the other hand, was just 5% faster once overclocked, so a pretty typical result there. Now, here's a look at the average performance seen across the 12 games tested, calculated using the GeoMean. With the 4070 Super, we saw on average a 5% performance improvement when manually overclocked, which is pretty typical of modern GPUs as I've said, and then with the 7900 GRE, it did slightly better, a 7% increase there, though when compared to the base spec reference card, it's more like a 12% increase. Either way though, the overclock was enough to nudge ahead of the 4070 Ti. Now, we saw that the gains were often more impressive at 4K, and the average data certainly backs that up, showing an 11% improvement for the manually overclocked GRE over the standard Nitro Plus, and a 17% increase from the AMD reference model. But while the GRE overclock performs even better at 4K, the 4070 Super overclock goes the other way, now showing just a 3% improvement on average, and this means with both models overclocked, the GRE was on average 13% faster, and that's a pretty significant margin. And it also meant that the GRE was able to match the performance of the 4070 Ti Super. Obviously, when it comes to overclocking, your mileage will vary, but all four GRE models that I have on hand were able to manage a memory speed of at least 20.8 gigabits per second, so that's within 2% of this Nitro model. Likewise, our 4070 Super Overclock is very typical. You can only expect around a 5-7% to improvement when manually overclocking the GeForce GPU. Typically speaking, at 4K with both models manually overclocked, you can expect around 10% greater performance on average from the 7900 GRE when compared to the 4070 Super. 
given the 700 GRE can be had for $550 US right now, and the 4070 Super, it's more like $600 US, that makes the Radeon GPU a pretty good deal, especially for those of you interested in overclocking for maximum performance. Moreover, you're looking at having to spend at least $500 US on a 7800 XT, though there are similar overclocking gains on offer there, so it will come down to what's available in your region as to which option makes the most sense. I do feel though that the ability to overclock the 7900 GRE to get performance within 10% of the 7900 XT does make it a much more attractive product, at least for those of you keen on tinkering with your graphics card. And this also begs the question, with memory bandwidth being such an issue for the 7900 GRE, why was memory overclocking so extremely limited for the retail launch last month? This seems like a massive oversight from AMD. After all, they felt the need to drag the GRE out of OEM only status to do battle with the likes of Nvidia's 4070 Super, so why not make it as appealing as possible? Frankly, modifying the retail version with faster memory would have been the play, and as an added bonus, could have even provided justification to give the product a less bizarre name. But at the very least, if you're going to restrict it with 18 gigabits per second memory, make sure enthusiasts can at least push that memory to its limits. Anyway, they've done that now, and as I said, for those of you willing to tinker, there's some pretty decent value on offer here with the 7900 GRE. Of course, let me know what you think about the GRE and its overclocking potential. Is this something you're interested in? For now though, that is going to do it for this video. If you liked it, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content. I promise this is the last 7900 GRE video that we're going to have for some time. Though we might do a big head-to-head -head or something like that with the 4070 Super. So perhaps I'm, perhaps I'm not being entirely truthful there. It's the last dedicated content piece to just this card, I think. All right. Uh, float plane Patreon. Sign up to either one of those if you want more content that's not necessarily GRE related. And thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.